What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Joshua Patsugi here. In today's video, I'd like to share with you the differences between Project Manager and Scrum Master. If this is something that interests you, as usual, don't go anywhere, stay tuned. So the reason why I want to talk about the differences between Project Manager and Scrum Master is because in every professional Scrum Master classes that I have facilitated, there are at least two participants who will ask me what are the differences between Project Manager and Scrum Master. Yes, I do understand that Project Manager role and Scrum Master role are totally different and should not be compared. However, many of these participants told me they have a genuine intent to become an awesome Scrum Master and knowing the differences between Project Manager and Scrum Master will be helpful for them to create the transition path from Project Manager to an awesome Scrum Master. So I thought I'm making this video for those of you who are coming from project management background and have a genuine intent to become an awesome Scrum Master. If this sounds like you, stay on this video. Whenever people ask me about the differences between Project Manager and Scrum Master in my professional Scrum Master classes, I would flash up an exercise as I do not have any background or experience in project management. In the first part of the exercise, I asked the participants to elaborate as many information as possible about the project manager role. And then at the second part of the exercise, I compared the differences of Scrum Master role and the project manager role based on the information they have elaborated in the first part of the exercise. So this is how the exercise goes. So for the first part of the exercise, as we concentrate on the project manager role, First, I ask every participant to write down on sticky notes as many activities as they possibly know that the project manager does from day to day. So after participants have listed down all of the activities that they know that the project manager do from day to day, I ask them to merge similar items and narrow it down to at least three to four items. And until today, most participants agree that project managers in essence do planning, controlling, monitoring, and reporting the project status to the stakeholders. And the context here is project. So after they have merged similar items and narrow it down, I ask them to look at the stickies and I ask them another question. I ask them based on these activities, how do we know that project managers are successful in doing their job? What are their scope of work and accountabilities? How do we evaluate whether project managers are successful in doing their job? What are their key performance indicator? So until today, the majority of participants agree that the project managers is deemed successful in doing their job when the project they manage is delivered on time, on scope, and on budget. Again, the context is project. So after they have elaborated project managers, scope of work, and accountabilities, along with the key performance indicator, I ask them to look at the stickies again, and I ask them another question for one last time. I ask them, what are the required skills for project managers to be successful in achieving their accountabilities. So until today, the majority of participants agree that in essence, project managers need great project management skills to ensure that the project they manage is delivered on time, on scope, and on budget. In some contexts, project managers need to have technical skills for example, if they are managing construction project, they at least need to have technical skills in construction or civil engineering or architecture. After they completed the first part, which is to elaborate as many information as possible about the project manager role, we turn to the second part where I explain the Scrum Master core purposes, what are the Scrum Master uh, main accountabilities and also the required skills for Scrum Master to be effective and successful in doing their job. So first, I explain to them the Scrum Master core purposes, why do they exist and what does the Scrum Master do from day to day. The Scrum Master exists not to control but to enable. The Scrum Master exists to enable agility throughout the whole company 
And not only the scrum team. Control implies limitation and constraint. The scrum master enabled the whole organization to go beyond limitation and achieve greatness in delivering value continuously to the customers. Rather than becoming the middle person to monitor and to report, the Scrum Master create an organization of trust and create an organization that is transparent so everyone within the company have full visibility of their current reality and make decision based on that rather than using political power. The Scrum Master create an environment of psychological safety so this transparency is used to accelerate learning rather than used as an opportunity to blame someone. After I have explained to them the core purposes of a Scrum Master, why does the role exist, what does the Scrum Master do from day to day, I explained to them the Scrum Master scope and accountabilities, which goes beyond projects. I also explained to them how do we evaluate the Scrum Master performance, what are the Scrum Master key performance indicators. The Scrum Master Scope of Work and Accountability is not project. The Scrum Master Scope and Accountability go beyond project, that is to continuously improve the whole company agility. Unlike a project that has a defined timeline, improving the whole company agility does not have a defined timeline and is a never-ending work, because the company can always be more agile than yesterday. An awesome Scrum Master is doing an awesome job if the agility metrics is improving from time to time. And the Scrum Master is not only focused at the Scrum Team level only, the Scrum Master needs to influence everyone in the company so that the whole company agility can be improved from time to time. So the Scrum Master is like the organization change leader and coach. Unlike the project manager, the Scrum Master does not manage project. The Scrum Master continuously improves the organization agility in delivering value to customers. This is a leadership and a coaching role. I have made a video specifically on Scrum Master accountability. If you are interested to learn more about Scrum Master accountability, click the link up here to watch the video. If you are interested to learn on how to evaluate the Scrum Master's performance in improving organization agility, I've already made a video on that. Click the link up here to learn more about it. After I have explained to them the Scrum Master's scope of work and accountabilities, and also the key performance indicator, I explained to them the Scrum Master required skills and the stances that the Scrum Master used to be effective and successful in doing their job. Because the Scrum Master is the organization change leader and coach, the required skills for Scrum Master to be effective and successful in doing their job are coaching skills, facilitation skills, teaching skills, and behavioral science skills. A Scrum Master also uses the mentoring stance. The Scrum Master is expected to have technical skills also because the Scrum Master need to bring their own experience, especially when they are mentoring the development teams on cleaning up their technical depths or mentoring the management about servant leadership. An awesome Scrum Master know when to apply the right skills and the right stances according to the context where the Scrum Master is in to improve the whole organization agility. I have made a video on the Scrum Master stances. If you're interested to learn more about it, click the link up here to watch the video. So at the end of the exercise, we have a flip chart which displays the differences between project manager role and the Scrum Master role, which looks something like this. So as you can see, because I do not have any project management background, I distribute the knowledge generation to participants. I ask participants to elaborate as many information as they possibly could about the project manager role. And only in the second part, I explain to them about the Scrum Master role because that's the role I know more than the project manager role. Well, that was quite a long video, but thank you for staying until the end of this video. I hope you found today's video helpful, especially for those of you who are transitioning from project manager to Scrum Master. If you liked today's video, as usual, don't forget to smash that like button. 
and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss any of my video in the future. See you until my next video. Bye!